When you look at me, what do you see? I'm American and I'm Italian, but what do you see? In 1974, an eight and a half year old girl landed at the JFK International Airport in New York City. Her name was Jo Hong Gok. She was born in Seoul, South Korea in 1966. She was abandoned at four years old with her little brother and sent to the city orphanage of Seoul where they were eventually forever separated. One day, the nuns from a nearby convent visited the children at the orphanage. Resourceful, she tugged on their long gray gowns and smiled as big as she could, hoping that she would be one of the selected few to live with the nuns at the convent. The nuns took her in, and there she was well cared for. They were the ones who facilitated her adoption. Immediately upon her arrival to the United States, she was given a new name, Robbie Eisenmesser. And from that moment on, she lost everything she once knew. That was 44 years ago. Jo Hong Gok is my mother. Robbie Eisenmesser is my mother. A new country, a new culture, a new religion, a new language, a new family. This was her new reality. In a truly global society, we need to see people for who they are and allow them to maintain their cultural identity, their personal, individual, cultural identity. Every year, there are people who emigrate to different countries around the world for various reasons. Some try to escape political or religious persecution, war, natural disasters. Others may look for job security, a better education, or merely an improved quality of life. The conventional wisdom 44 years ago was conformity. My mother's new parents lovingly believed that this was in her best interest, as they wanted her to live the most normal life possible. She was expected to adapt, and so she did. Growing up, my mother lived in an all-white suburban community with not one immigrant in sight. Her mother tongue was forgotten, no longer part of her, and she was enrolled in Jewish religious studies. Other than the memories that she never shared, Robbie Eisenmesser no longer had any connection to her original cultural identity. We live in a society where we so often try to get everyone to do and think like us, to conform. We need to learn to change our mindset and see others for who they truly are and not what we think they should become. If we develop the curiosity to learn about one another, if we walk in the shoes of others, if we listen to their stories, if we embrace their diversity, only then will we see them. Only then will we develop a common understanding and a higher level of empathy. Allowing cultural diversity into our society will help eradicate racism, prejudice, and discrimination. And in today's world, Diversity can be perceived as a threat to nationalism and nativism, when in reality, diversity enriches the fabric of a growing global society. Be curious, walk in the shoes of others, listen to their stories, embrace diversity. 44 years ago, what happened to my mother when she was stripped of her cultural identity may have been socially acceptable. I, however, would like to be part of a changing society where cultures are embraced, where we give people the opportunity to hold on to their cultural heritage, their cultural identity, and their individuality. Now, look at me again. Who do you see? Thank you.